Good morning and welcome on this June the 7th, the first Sunday of June. And as is our custom, we are using the Celtic service. And again, as is our custom, we all begin with the territorial acknowledgement. As we gather here today, we wish to acknowledge that we are on land that at the time of contact was the traditional territory of the Three Fires Confederacy and the Anishinaabe peoples. We thank all the generations of indigenous people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years. May he, we who dwell on or visit this land also be good stewards, honoring those who came before us and as we seek to move forward in our reconciliation with our indigenous peoples. Our service begins, of course, on page one in your Celtic book, if you have it at home. We come in this service to God. In our need and bringing with us the needs of the world. We come to God, who has come to us in Jesus. And who walks with us the road of our world's suffering. We come with our faith and with our doubts. We come with our hopes and with our fears. We come as we are, because it is God who invites us to come. And God has promised never to trick us away. Holy God, maker of the skies above, lowly Christ, born amidst the growing earth, spirit of life, wind over the flowing waters, in earth, sea, and sky, you are there. O hidden mystery, sun behind all suns, soul behind all souls, in everything we touch, in everyone we meet, your presence is round us and we give you thanks. When we have not touched, but trampled you in creation, when we have not met, but missed you in one another, forgive us and hear now our plea for mercy. The creator of the world watches over you in your waking and your sleeping. The savior of the world ransoms himself for your sins and for your eternal life. The spirit of the world dwells within you to guide you and keep you safe. The God of love and mercy grant you the grace of pardon, wholeness, and peace through Jesus Christ. Amen. Come, Father of the poor. Come, light of our hearts. Come, generous spirit. By the glory of your creation around us, by the comfort of your forgiveness within us, by the wind of your spirit eddying through the years within these walls, renew us so that we come glad to this celebration. Amen. Amen. God holy, God strong and holy, God holy and deathless, have mercy on us. The Lord be with you. Also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There are many preachers who will tell you that they look forward to preaching on Trinity Sunday, and many who will tell you that they don't. I am in the latter group. The preachers who preach on this day Traditionally, at St. Mark's are called associate clergy, honorary assistants, deacons, assistant curates, or, vis or visiting clergy. Anybody but me. But not this year. 
you might well ask, why don't you, Peter, look forward to preaching on this day? In a phrase, it's complicated. I have prayed for revelation, and if anything, I have come up with a three-point sermon about the Trinity. First point, defining the Trinity. Second point, the mission of the Trinity. And the third point, our place in the mission of the Trinity. So the first point, definition. I will begin by saying that one is usually on thin ice when trying to define the Trinity. Definitions are helpful, if only to get the conversation going, a sort of starting point. At the same time, the problem with them is that we can get lost in arguing over the points of the definition and don't go beyond the definition itself. And so this point, the first point, is brief and to the point. The Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church defines the Trinity in this way. It can be neither known by unaided human reason, apart from revelation, nor convincingly demonstrated after it has been revealed. How's that working for you? The definition I like is found in a symbol, which explains the Trinity this way. The Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. While the Father is not the Spirit, who is not the Son, who is not the Father. Simply put, when we talk about Jesus, we don't take away God or the Holy Spirit, and vice versa, vice versa. End of first point. Second point, the mission of the Trinity. While my first point was brief, my second point may be controversial. Let's start at the beginning, the beginning of Jesus' ministry in Luke's Gospel. Chapter 4, verses 18 to 21, when Jesus stands up to read in the synagogue. He says, and he quotes, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. What we have here at the beginning of Jesus' ministry is a Trinitarian statement from Isaiah in the Old Testament. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. These inaugural words of Jesus' mission are often used by those who are interested in Jesus' inclination towards social justice to the point that that is all what his mission is about. But let's look briefly at these words that Jesus reads from Isaiah and how they are fulfilled in him. We read that Jesus is anointed, not just appointed by God. Anointed is the world, is the word from which we get in Hebrew Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah, the savior of the world. Jesus did not come to free them from the oppression of the Romans and their Jewish collaborators even has one amongst his his disciples, Matthew. He comes to free them from their selves, from their enslavement to sin. For if he had just come to overthrow the oppressive Romans, his mission would have been over then and there. If that were the case, Jesus would have been for those people in that time and for no other people in any other time. This is good news. It is good news to the poor, to the oppressed, and the blind of all time, not 
just that time. It's not time sensitive. It's for all time. Jesus did not come to overthrow a government. He came to proclaim good news, redemption, and freedom from sin, and everlasting life. Thinking about what Jesus did leads to my third point, our place in the mission of the Trinity. I finally get to our reading today, and we hear, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am always with you to the end of the age. Key words here are, the action words are, Go, make disciples, baptize them, teach them, obey and remember. Liturgy. The liturgy is often defined as the work of the people. But that's not exactly correct. I couldn't preach a sermon on the Trinity without some Greek thrown in. So the word liturgy comes from the Greek term, leitorgeia, which literally means work for the people. Liturgy is a literal translation of two words, litos ergos, or public service. In origin, it signified the offerings Greek Christians made in service to the people. Some churches have sending after the blessing as a heading in the service. And so when we are sent out, what are we to do? We are to go, make disciples, baptize, teach, obey, and remember. Our actions, our ministries, often speak louder than words. And as Jesus says in Matthew, For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Jesus then says later, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to the one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. The prayer shawl ministry, community lunches, the beacon, PWRDF, food cupboard, hospital chaplains, service organizations, and all that we do in our community are where we become part of the Trinity's mission. We are a church who, through the Holy Trinity, speak and live the good news of redemption and are sent into mission. May we continue to do that in this different and extraordinary time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I would invite you now to affirm your faith as we say together the affirmation of faith number one, which can be found on page three in your booklets if you have them at home. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh born of a woman's womb, servant of the poor. He was tortured and nailed to a tree. A man of sorrows, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day, he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. You are above us, O God. You are beneath. You are in air. You are in earth. You are beside us. You are within. O God, you are in the betrayed and suffering people of our world, just as you were in the broken body of Jesus. We pray now for all that concerns us as we gather at table together. O Christ, we bow before you in the shelter house of prayer once more to give thanks. Together we gather, celebrating your presence in the creation around us, in the flowing air, and in the fertile earth. Christ, in your mercy. Hear our oh, Jesus, you sat at table with the betrayed and rejected of Palestine. We pray for those today who do not feel welcomed in their daily lives. Christ, in your mercy. Hear our oh, Jesus, you identified with the naked and with those who had no place to lay their heads. We pray for the thousands of homeless men and women, old and young, in our towns and in our cities. Christ, in your mercy. Hear our oh, Jesus, you belonged to a refugee family. We pray for the millions of displaced people in our world and for the opening of borders to the nationless. Christ, in your mercy. O oh, Jesus, you care for your companions and for the little ones who surrounded you. We pray for the dependent ones whom God has given us to care for. Christ, in your mercy. O oh, Jesus, you who walk with the wounded along the road of our world's suffering, who seek your grace of healing for the broken people and places of our world. Christ, in your mercy. O oh, Jesus, you prayed that we might be one as you and the Father are one. We pray that during this week we may feel at home with one another and with you in our midst. Let us offer our own prayers, both spoken and unspoken. God and three persons, blessed Trinity, we pray for your church, for Justin, our Archbishop, for Linda, our Primate, and our Metropolitan Archbishop, and for Susan, our bishop, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for your church throughout the world, for those thriving, and for those who have lost a sense of direction during this pandemic. We give thanks for St. Mark's and our church family, and gladly acknowledge all the gifts you have given us, and we ask you to open our hearts that we may welcome strangers and share our faith with others. God and three persons, blessed Trinity, we remember this morning those who are sick, sad, or lonely. We pray that they may be aware of your comforting presence and know that in your hands they are safe and loved. Please remember the following people in your prayers during the week ahead. Cynthia and Andy, Johanna, Brian, Bill, Wallace, Elizabeth, Cliff, Teresa, Lee and Andrea, Charlie, Linda, Lee, Joanne, Jean, Jamie, Sue, Howard, Kristen, Ken and Richard, and Deacon Jane Rokeby, Deacon Christine Clatworthy, Elaine, Jeff, and Kay. God and three persons, blessed Trinity, we are horrified and saddened by the events that have taken place in Minneapolis and across the United States this past week, and for the unquenchable death of George Floyd. We strive to examine our own bias through self-direction and earnestly work to resolve them. We celebrate and welcome the diverse faces of Christ in our community, our worship, and our ministries. We strive to live by compassion and by consciously in inclusive of all individuals. We strive to teach our children how to resolve differences nonviolently and respectfully and have the courage to model it in our own behavior. Fill our hearts with love for you and our neighbor so that we may work with you 
in healing our land from racial injustice. Christ, in your mercy. Teach us now, O Christ, to pray as brothers and sisters. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We are grateful now for those who continue to support the church with their offerings every week. Living God, receive all we offer you this day. Grant that hearing your word and responding to your spirit, we may share in your divine life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. And today we are going to bless our prayer shawls um, that are down here on the altar at the front of the church. And we give thanks for those who are in the ministry of knitting and distributing, giving to those who uh, need some comfort, um, who are lonely or ill, uh, and we give thanks for that ministry. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for loving us so much that you gave us your son to be one of us. Bless these prayer shawls and let them be a sign of our love and compassion for others, and bless the hands and hearts of those who knit or crocheted them. May God's grace be upon them, warming, comforting, and folding, and embracing. May we each of these mantles be a safe haven, a sacred place of security and well-being. May they sustain and embrace in good times as well as during difficult ones. May those who receive these shawls be cradled by hope, kept in joy, graced with peace, and wrapped in love. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing prayer can be found on page 17 in your booklets if you are following along. O God, our Father, who gave to your servant Columba the gifts of courage, faith, and cheerfulness, and sent people forth from the holy isle of Iona to carry the word of your gospel to every creature, grant, we pray, a like spirit to your church, even at this present time. Further in all things, the purpose of this community of St. Mark's, that hidden things may be revealed to us and new ways found to touch the hearts of all. May we preserve with each other sincere charity and peace, and if it be your will, 
grant that this holy place of your abiding be continued still to be a sanctuary and a light. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grace of God be with you. The grace of Christ be with you. The grace of the Spirit be with you. May the love of God fill you with joy and peace. May the healing power of Christ strengthen and save you. May the Holy Spirit encourage you. May a thousand angels guide your steps. And may a blessing from this holy place protect you all your days. Amen. And we'll now ask Tracy to come up and do the lion's tail. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, lions. Today is Trinity Sunday, that special day we think about and celebrate our belief in the three persons of the Holy Trinity. God the Father, who creates and provides for us and all his creatures. God the Son, who saves us from our sins and makes things right between us and God, and God the Holy Spirit, who blesses us, strengthens us, teaches us, and guides us to God. We spend a lot of time in our Lions program learning about Jesus, because since he lived on earth and felt and experienced some of the same things we feel and experience, he is perhaps a little easier to relate to. God and the Holy Spirit, who are even more mysterious, invisible, all-powerful, who created all things, well, they're a lot harder to understand, but they are equally important. The idea of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is something we've talked about over the last couple of weeks. I described them together in the Trinity as being like a hockey team, with a goalie, defense, and offense three equal parts that work together for the good of the team. Others have used an egg to describe how the Trinity works, the shell, the yolk, and the white. Sometimes people use the example of an apple, where the seeds are God, the flesh of the apple is Jesus, and the skin holding it all together is the Holy Spirit. But those ways of describing the Trinity don't actually explain what it is or how it came to be. They just give us an idea of how the three parts make up something bigger. Like if one plus one plus one equals one, not three. Thomas Edison, the famous inventor, once remarked, we don't know what water is. We don't know what light is. We don't know what electricity is. We don't know what heat is. We have a lot of ideas about these things, but that is all. But we don't let our ignorance about these things keep us from their use. The truth of that statement is real. Most of us might be able to describe a few things we know about technology, but just because we might not be able to explain how an electric light works or how a telephone or a TV works, 
doesn't stop us from using them. A fourth century monk, and we are in the 21st century, so that's a long time ago, named Evagrius Ponticus summed it up pretty well. He said, God cannot be grasped by the mind. If he could be grasped, he would not be God. So it's okay not to understand it all. No one does. However, that doesn't mean we aren't meant to try to do what God wants us to do. Let's pray together. Dear God, we don't understand everything about you, but help us to do good in your name anyway. Help us to do the things that you taught us are most important, like loving you, loving our neighbors as ourselves, practicing kindness even when there is little chance of reward, valuing peace, being good caretakers of the earth and the people in it. Help us to have the courage to stand up for people who are being treated unfairly, who are suffering and need help. Help us to see ourselves in everyone we meet. There is a lot of suffering in the world, and it has always been this way, it seems. But when we look at a single leaf, or the stars in the night sky, or a rainbow, help us to remember that you are bigger than all of the hurt, the fear, the anger. You have given us the job and the joy of remembering that and living that. And thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit to guide us along the way. Amen. Have a good week, Lions. Go in peace and friendship and hospitality, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.